on it. Okay, so um, we pick this up at the bottom of Yud Chesom base, just about Yud Chesom base, and the Mishnah there. Um, we did look at this Mishnah, but now we move on to the Gemara. Now, if we just remind ourselves where we are, remember we dis discussed this last time. Um, we're talking about now the messages being sent out to tell everybody when, in fact, was Rosh Chodesh. Because what would happen, we've seen this before, um, various Mishnayas, that the people would come and tell the Bezdin that they saw the new moon. In fact, of course, today being Rosh Chodesh, um, actually, the what's called the Moila, the point where the moon actually crosses over, uh, was about midday today. So it was it would be impossible to see the moon um, tonight. But maybe uh, in this example, not. It probably just possible. I'm mean, just thinking about that. I actually I looked out a bit, little bit too late. Um, to see whether I could actually spot the moon because it was a, a, you know, a wonderful clear sky. Um, but I, I got out too late to see whether I could see the moon because it would be very close to the Rosh Chodesh. Um, but I, I, I didn't get out early enough. But what I'm saying is this, the actual Molod was today, which means that's a crossover point, which means theoretically, theoretically, um, it would have, might have been possible just at sunset, once the sun set, just about to see that small, thin crescent moon. Um, but I said, I didn't get out early enough to see whether it was going to be visible. Um, but if somebody did see it, then what would happen? They would run online. Off. Uh, once the uh, Aiden come to, let's say they saw the moon tonight, they would come to Bezdin tomorrow or tonight, tomorrow, and say, yes, we saw the moon. Of course, they'd be tested. And the, um, as we've explained before, the Rabboni would know exactly astronomically where the moon would have been, et cetera, to make sure they actually did see the moon. Uh, and then the, on certain occasions, certain months, they would send witnesses out to tell everybody when they saw the moon because um, the Bezdin would know in Yerushalayim, the point is getting that message out to everyone in, well, as far as they could go, um, as they were going further out from Yerushalayim. Now, we mentioned there's certain months where they go out. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter unless you need to know what the date is. It doesn't really matter unless it's going to be a yom to falling in that month. Um, presumably for documents, they were using the documents using um, a, another calendar because you see you can't if you don't know what day it is you can hardly have a document particularly a legal document stating a particular date if you don't know whether it's this day or that day you see what I mean so it looks like they were probably using a different calendar for, for documents and we spoke about that before um, whether they'd be using the documents and the dates of, of whoever was um, let's say particularly in the Roman times they'd be using um, the dates of particular leaders but leaving that aside, certain months they'd be sending out witnesses or shaluchim to tell everybody we saw the moon. And we went through the various months. And one of the months it mentioned, and there's going to be more about this, was the month of Av. Why? Because people need to know when Tisha B'Av will be. Why? Because sadly people will be fasting on Tisha B'Av, so they need to get out and explain to everybody tell them, as we saw in the Mishnah, they will go for those eight days to tell everybody, yes, to when Tisha B'Av would be, um, so people would know exactly the date of Tisha B'Av. Those people who wouldn't um, actually be within the distance that the Shaluchim could get to, they would have to rely on knowing it from the previous month and taking some type of um, uh, and making some assumption, which what you want to do is as much as possible, people should know when the date of Tisha B'Av is, right? Now, the Gemara now asks, because it mentioned various months, but Tammuz and Teves were not in that list. Of course, it, the list, for example, does include Tishri, because we need to know for Sukkot, we need to know, of course, in Rosh Hashanah itself, 
hardly anybody would know when the 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 first of Tishri was because the first of Tishri being on the first of Monday, you can't really get people out, messengers out. That's why everybody will be keeping two days Rosh Hashanah. But by the time you get to Sukkot, people would know those people within the borders uh, and and the area that the Shluchim could have got to. Similarly for Nissan, we spoke Ab was one of the months, um, but. Tammuz and Teves are not in that list. Yeah, uh, the months very quick, just recapping what the months are. Nissen for Pesach, Av was one we just mentioned. People need to know when Tisha B'Av is. Elul, we spoke about Elul because Elul at least will give them a good idea when Rosh Hashanah should be. Because if they didn't know when they know, of course, the month can either be 29 or 30 days. But it's nice to have a starting point, because if you don't have the starting point, you don't know when the 29 or the 30 days are up. So the first of all, they would go out and then people would know, make an assumption, um, 29 or 30 days after the first of Elul. And then we spoke about Kislev for Hanukkah. We spoke about Adar, because for Purim. Uh, and then we spoke about Iyar. The, the second month of the year, yeah, for Pesach Sheni. People need to know what the date of Pesach Sheni is. More of that as the Gemara will unfold. So it, it would imply that Shivas of Atamas is not nearly as important as Tisha B'Av. That's why it's not mentioned. That's why it's exactly not mentioned. right. Thank you, sir. That's exactly the Gemara. The end of, of Yudches Omad Aleph says the Gemara, Velefku Nami Atamus Vateves. Why do they not also go out? So people should know when, as we know, Shiva Osa Batamas, there's more of this now as we turn the page, and Teves, Asora Bateves, um, which we're going to discuss now as we turn the page. Have a look at your Ches Omad base. And if you see your Ches Omad base, this is Mervin's point. Do Oma. Rav Chono Bar Bizna, Omer Rav Shimon Chasid. Have you got that? You'd hear some base. Just explaining that there are other fasts. There's not just one fast called Tisha B'Av. Of course, we're ignoring Tish, uh, Yom Kippur uh, because that's already been mentioned under Tishri. But what about other fast days? What is the posuk? The posuk we're quoting here comes from Zachariah. Where it says, second line down in the Gemara, Koi Omar Shem Tzavokis, Soim Horavi, the fast of the fourth, and the fast of the fifth, and the fast of the seventh. We'll see what this means in a moment. But Soim Siri, and the fast of the tenth. You've probably got the posset around the side of the page if you're using the attachment. Yehyeh, which in the Gemara as well, Levesu Huda Lusosain Ulasimcha. Ultimately, we look forward to those days. They are time and they're fasts, but they will sosain and simcha. I mean, make your mind up. Is it a tsoin? Is it a sosain and simcha? Why is it called a tsoin and why is it called a sosain and a simcha? And we'll explain them the difference between those two in a moment, too. Says the Gemara, Bizman Sheyesh Sholom, here the Sosan and the Simcha, just explaining the Gemara. So the Gemara is now telling us that that Posuk in Zechariah is telling, yes, those dates, have a look at the top Rashi, Dukulu, all those Yemei Tanis Ninhu. They're all fast days because they recall back things when we're talking about the destruction of the Beis HaMikdosh. Bizman Hazer nowadays, She'ein Beis HaMikdosh Kaim, where the Beis HaMikdosh is not built. Umas Nisin, when was our Mishnah talking? Also Bizman Hazer. Nowadays, Komari, because it speaks at the end of the Mishnah that says, when the Beis HaMikdosh was in existence, they went out also for the first of ER to remind people about Pesach Sheni, a second opportunity to bring the Korban Pesach if they were too far away or Tome. So again, our Mishnah is talking about nowadays.
Because the end of the mission, it says, when the Bish, when the Beis Hamikdash was in existence, pretty clear the Mishnah therefore is talking about nowadays. If that's the case, going back to our Gemara, the Posuk in Zechariah calls them fasts and also says Soson and Simcha. Have a look at the third line of Rashi. When there's Shalom, says Rashi, She'en Yad Ho'ovdei Tekifa Al Yisrael. It's not stra- strong, as a, almost like a stronghold over Klal Yisrael. On those times, Yiyu the Sosoy Nila Simcha. It will be joyous days. Lerza the Hesper of Atanis. In fact, those days will ch- would change, as we say, Hafoch Lon Nila Sosoy and Simcha. They will change to j- days of rejoicing. But if not, that posuk is telling us that it's either a same, they're all fast days, or they're all becoming, we look forward soon, the Sosain and Asimcha with the rebuilding of the Beis Hamikdash, they will transform into days of Sosan and Simcha. Now, again. We've got this Posuk in Zachary, which tells us all those days related to the destruction of the Beis HaMikdosh are either fast days or they're happy days, days of rejoicing. Our Mishnah, as it starts off, you can see it's talking about nowadays when we don't have a Beis HaMikdosh, because the Mishnah concludes and says, those times when they did have a Beis HaMikdosh, dot, 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 etc. So you can see the first part of the Mishnah is discussing a time when there is nowadays when there's no Beis HaMikdosh. If there's no Beis HaMikdosh, then all those days, including our Batebis, each one of them we'll be discussing in a moment, is recall something about the Beis HaMikdosh, the destruction of the Beis HaMikdosh. So therefore, our original question is the following. Why did the Mishnah only mention about Av, that they go out in Av, to tell everybody where, when the Rosh Chodesh Av took place? What about going out for, to tell people when Rosh Chodesh Tammuz took place, when Rosh Chodesh Teves took place? So at least those people who are close enough to Yerushalayim will know the exact date for the fasts. Is that a question which is now understood? Why does our Mishnah only relate to Chodesh Av and not to occasions like Asura Bateves or Shiva Osa Batamuz? Continue the Gemara. Omar of Papa, and this is the answer. The reason why they don't go out for the dates for Shiva Osoba Tammuz and Asura Bateve is Omar Papa Hochikoma. This is what it means. Bisman Sheye Sholem, when there's peace and there really is, we're not being controlled by the Umaso Elon in Etz Israel. Ye Yula Sosan El Simcha, the rebuilding of the Beis Hamikdosh. Yesh Gezeras Hamalchus, if there is Gezeras Hamalchus, interesting, if you look back at some of the earlier editions, the uncensored version, I don't know if you've got that in your attachment, it's in my Gemara, it actually, it's not just Yesh Gezeras Hamalchus, it's Yesh Gezeras Shamad, forcing people um, away from Judaism, that's Shamad, yeah, so that's that's the uncensored version. As instead of Gezeras Malchus, if it's a time of Shemad, where they were trying to force people to convert away from Yadus, then in fact it's a time. And says Rashi, compulsory. Ein Gezeras Hamalchus. If there's no Gezeras Hamalchus, the Ein Sholom. In other words, in between. There's no Gezeira of Shmad, but you can't say there's Sholem to the extent that we've now got the rebuild, re, re, rebuilding of the Beit HaMikdosh. 
then under those circumstances, rotsu misanim, if the Rabbonim decide that they, we should be fasting, then misanim, rotsu ein misanim. If they want to, the rabbis have it on their, in their power to say, we will not fast on these days, or we will fast on these days. Have a look at Rashi. Rotsu ein misanin, v'kivun d'rushusu, seeing as these days are therefore rushus, it's up to the rabbonim to decide whether they want people to recall those dates or not. Lo matrachinon shuluchin alayu. We don't give this hard work for the shluchim to go out and tell everybody. Um, yeah, you have one date and you can decide yourselves which of those to date. We're not too worried about actually hitting that date spot on. And therefore, that's why the shluchim don't go out. But we have another problem. Well, what defines, what defines whether there's... Um... You can have the Gezer of Malchus. I mean, what, what's, what's the, what are the circumstances? No, the Gezer of Malchus, very clearly here, according to the uncensored version, the real time for the Tanesim would be a time of conversions. You've got this very clearly, this Shemad. Ain Shalom, there's no peace. Not only no peace, that they're going around trying to convert Klal Yisrael, then that's the extreme, and that's when the fasts are compulsory. Yeah. If there's shalom, then that's totally, it will be lasos and a simchok, we understand with the rebuilding of the Beis HaMikdosh. If you're in between, where it's not, there's no compulsory, there's no conversions going on, but you can still not say that it's time, that nobody is against Klal Yisrael, they're living happily with no, no enemies against them, etc., under those circumstances, when, in other words, they've got their enemies, but there's no conversion, then it sounds from this Gemara that as it's not compulsory, it will be up to the Rabbonim to decide whether or not they should be fasting. Of course, nowadays the ruling is that they are fast, but that's not the point. Because they are therefore not strictly compulsory therefore the shluchim did not go out on those dates the only ever, was, was, there ever a yeah. period, was there ever a period in history where um there was this intermediate phase that it was not um not shamad but not obviously not i think we're saying that's happening today where you know there's no shamad but then it was still you can hardly say there are no enemies against Klal Yisrael but we're not in the ultimate Sosan and Simcha situation. Yeah, but no I Rabbonin saying, saying, the only be saying we don't have to fast though, aren't they? Uh, and that, yeah, that's because I say it's up to the Chachomim to decide. You see, we've got a posuk. The posuk in Zachariah tells me it's a Tzoyim or it's Sosan and Simcha. And what the Gemara is saying, yes, those are the two extremes. In between, when in fact there's not this, as I say, forced conversions taking place, then it's really up to the Chachomim to decide, and it's true, nowadays they've decided that there will be fast. But it, as it's in that situation, we don't mind if people hit the wrong date, if you see what I mean. It's not, we're not that bothered if the Shaluchim don't go out to tell people when those fast days are, you know, so we know the exact date of the fast. That's so what we're saying. Except, to... except this one, just except one, and that's what we're going to pick up now. But Tisha B'Av still still to be included. That's the problem. I think that was your original question. So what we where we're up to, and then we'll take the questions. Where we're up to at the moment is we're making a difference between Av, where even nowadays. Or nowadays, where we're, it sounds like we're in this in between situation, no forced conversions, but nevertheless, it's not total sosin and simple with the rebuilding of the base Hamikdash. There seems to be a difference between Tisha B'Av and all those other fasts. Yes, they're all fasts, but we're not forcing the Shaluchim to go out and tell everybody the exact date to be 100% certain what the date would be. Of course, 
when it comes to Sukkot, when it comes to Pesach, we need to know the exact date. And that if you're close enough to Eretz Yisrael, close enough to Yushalayim, then you would know the exact date. On those other fasts, we are not that bothered, but we need to know the difference between Tisha B'Av and those other fasts, and that's what the Gemara will pick up. So I think there were some questions. Yeah, I have a question. Did, 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 don't you need, I mean, maybe it's not fixed, but three weeks between Shibos and uh, and, and Tisha B'Av? You do. So how would you do that? Because if you, you've you got fixed, Tisha B'Av is going to be fixed by the Shluchim. Yes. Shivas of Atamos. You're, yeah. you're quite right. You're, yeah, you would go according to, if you say, uh, some type of majority or whatever. And you're right. You wouldn't always have your full three it's weeks. It's not a fixed three weeks. It could be whatever. No, it is. no, you're right. It could be different. Yeah, it could. It, it, you're right. It could be a day out. Absolutely. That's what we're saying. If you wouldn't know. And nowadays, with our, of course, with our calendar, we have this this fixed date, but that's a separate point. Here we're talking about the time when they were sending out Shaluchim. They wanted people to be spot on when how it came to him, how, would, how would the Chachomim tell people when that date was? I mean, what, what would they do? They would, they would, how, how would they declare it and how would that word get out to everybody? Would, sorry, what do you mean by? Well, Shiva Subatamas, right? They say, we're going to fix Shiva Subatamas. I mean, I don't know. What they, they can't say it's on Shiva Subatamas because that's not going to help a lot of people. No, she's looking. No. Through. So how, how exactly is this fixed and distributed? I mean, what, what is the mechanism? No, the mechanism normally would be, you'd know when Shavuos, by the time you got to the end, you'd know Shavuos, and you generally follow some type of pattern of having Mole Chose, Mole Chose, because they're 29 and a half, days for the moon to circuit and, and go around the earth you normally have the norm in fact it's very interesting this year although a leap year we are still spot on having cassidron which means 29 30 29 30 uh right across including kislev cheshvan kislev uh cheshvan and kislev because they can sometimes be different dates some by 30 without going through the whole calendar now, but you generally find it went 29 30, 29 30. So once you know when Sivan was, and you'd know by the time you got to the end of Sivan, presumably you take an average and you would have made an assumption and, and therefore will assume. Or, they would, or presumably they would fix a number of days from Rosh Sivan. Could and be, could be, could be on, yeah, yeah, on average, yes. Um, yeah, so it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter very much as long as you are in some way, I wouldn't say celebrate, it's the opposite, isn't it? That you've got to be doing something to remind ourselves of Shiva Osobatama. So they would make a date for that. You're right. They wouldn't be certain what date it would be. I mean, even uh, if they're going out for Tisha, what about those people who are beyond? the borders as how far they will get for Tisha B'Av. They would make a date on, as you say, a certain assumption um, and assume that that's a date. We are now having a fast date to commemorate Tisha B'Av, even though they weren't absolutely certain that was a date. Of course, when it comes to Tisha B'Av, there's less time for them to travel. Um, as we said before, Hochim, there only is eight days of traveling with the Shabbos in between. So obviously, fewer people are going to be certain when the date of Tisha B'Av will be. Other people, as you said, will, will have to make some assumption and they'll say we are there. make an assumption anyway, because, um, I mean, realistically, it used to take months to travel from Yerushalayim to anywhere of some distance. I mean, to get to France. Well, that, yeah. Uh, that, the board, the, the distances are how far can you get? Let's say we've come to Pesach and we've got those borders. I mean, you're, you're traveling in 15 days. You're not going to get that, you know, outside Eretz Israel, um, you know, you know, traveling. And it wasn't it wasn't that easy um, with a bonfire is a lot easier. But if you if you're traveling out, it's going to be difficult. So you're right. You're going to be making assumptions when the dates are. Yes. And what the Gemara is saying, though, is for Tisha B'Av, at least those people who are close enough to Yerushalayim, let them know the actual date of Tisha B'Av. So therefore, it can be commemorated 
spot on by as many people as possible. But when it comes to Shivos and Batamas and those other fasts, as long as you are commemorating it, but we're not that bothered about hitting the date spot on. Interesting. Says the Gemara, why not? And this if is I where it something, up, no, no, just come back to the original question. Was there ever a period, you said the Rabbanon have decided now, I mean, there's not been any public, um, there's not been any any sort of, uh, what's the word, conference or something of, of Rabbanon to say, or any time in period of history of this intermediate period where it's not so simple, simple but it's not, it's not oppression, they've just, that they've made um, a, pronoun a pronouncement as to whether it's necessary to fast or not. It seems to be by default at the moment. No, there's, well, not no really. Active, I mean, you... there's, there's no active, there's been no active um, pronouncements as far as I'm aware. I mean, that's what I'm asking. Really. No, what we're saying, therefore, is from the time of the Mishnah onwards, yeah. once it, it, it sounds like it, it, from the time, and from this Gemara itself, we can yeah. see from then on it moved into this middle category because otherwise yeah. you see our mission itself should have said all those things. Oh, I understand that. I understand we're in the middle category. So if in the middle category, you then have an option. The Rabbi have an op have an option whether whether to institute these fasts or not. But there's not been as far. But has there been this? Has there been this? Um, in, it, has there been this decision-making process? I mean, where, 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 where is it recorded that they said... We're well, now other... Yeah, period. I mean, you, you, you've got that we're following now. through from this Gemara onwards through the Rishonim, through the Shulchan Aruch, yeah. you can see that, yeah, it's, it's been decided that, that that will be... Um, yes, it will be commemorated. We seem um, to be keeping it by default rather than being a yes. an active decision. That's what I'm saying. Um, I mean, who's who's where has there been a conference? There's been a the Sanhedrin or something put together, or you know, convocation of Rabbonim to say we've got to do this. There hasn't been, has there? Well, other than you've got the the say going through the times up to the time of the Shulchan Aruch, telling us that that's the decision that's that was made. So obviously, well, where's, you know, the, where, where, where's from, the decision made? Where's the decision made? That's why I, I don't. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't want to be difficult, but I'm just saying, you're saying we're in, we're in an intermediate period, and in this intermediate period, it's, it's dependent on the discretion of the Rabbonim. And I'm not aware that there's been any debate about this as to, as to how we've decided, how the discretion of the Rabbonim to just have come down on the side of continuing these fasts rather than not. Where's this discussion been? No, well, if you look at the Shulchan, you can see, and, and you've got the following situation. Everybody, well, we, as we see through the Halacha, you can see nowadays that Tisha B'Av is much more severe, and this will follow what we're going to have now in the Gemara. And yeah. so, therefore, there are leniencies. We do want to commemorate it. And when we say Rotsu Misanim, Rotsu no Misanim, yeah. it yeah. means that there is this leeway, and people... I say, again, you do need the Rabbonim to decide. We do want to commemorate it, but there will be leniencies because it's not as severe. That's what we're saying. It's not as severe. I, I think what we're saying is when you say Rotsu Misanim, um, it means if there's a reason not to fast, then yes, you've got that room um, to maneuver where it comes to tisha B'Av, it's much more severe that's what we're saying so the i, I know you've got in the gemara here it says rotsu misanim what have we got here um bismanchi bismanchi is sholim yes yes because that is so angry yeah all, i mean all you've got in the gemara here, here you're quite right is this Rotsu Misanim, if the rabbis decided Motsu Misanim, but you're right, uh, I haven't got for you a line here which is saying, and in fact, they decided Rotsu Misanim. Um, that's really Rotsu Misanim, keeping the Rishusu and Matuchin Shluchim Alayu. And that's all you got in Rashi. It's a Rishus. It's it's, it's, I think what we're saying there, it's therefore not in the same category as Tisha B'Av, which is, if you look at, you know, go through all, uh, all the sources here on the Rishonim, you'll see that the, there is a very big difference when you say Rotsu, 
Um, rotsu means, it doesn't mean like, you know, rot, you can totally discard it. What we're saying here is rotsu, if they want to make it as strong as Tisha B'Av they can, or they can make it a lot weaker. I think that's what we're saying. Can I, can I just say, uh, or ask two things? First of all, surely if it depends on uh, Yesh Sholom, or, um, that would depend on not just the time and the period, the century, but also the place. I mean, uh, as you said, you know, right now, certainly in the countries where we live, there's Sholom and there's, there's no Shmud. Um, yes. Whereas right now, if you were living in um, Iran or Syria, um, the Rabbonim there presumably would say we have to be very strict about the time. So the Gemara doesn't, it looks like the Gemara doesn't talk about place, but isn't that implied that this is not necessarily, you see, I wouldn't expect there to be an international Sanhedrin saying, well, for the next 50 years and so on. It depends where you where as well as when, surely. Yes, but it also depends. You see, once there are places where we've got this Losh and Nebrashi, Yad Oivikochonim Takifa Al Yisrael, then presumably we are all in this together, as it were. That's your point. In other words, okay. although if people are suffering elsewhere, we are still nevertheless as Yisrael, oh, as okay. Kal Yisrael. You cannot oh, say okay. the Yad Ovi is, is okay. not to keep Al Yisrael. Okay, thank you. Okay, I see that. And then I just want to make a comment about, I like yes. the fact that you, that you said, Norman, that right now it's a time of Sholom. And I, I think um, because... Um, Mervyn was asking about, you know, historically, where are their periods and so on. So I think maybe one marker of the fact that we are in a time of Sholem is that I've got the Steinsaltz Gemara here, and they put yes. the word Shmud back in the in the text. Yes, um, and oh, in the text itself. In the text itself. Yes. Um, and I, I see on, on, on the text you're using, I can see the Mr. Sashas has, has a note saying that. Yes. But, but here it's Shmud. the other way around. And I guess that's a, that's a marker that, you know, at times when the actual... Gomorrah was edited and people were fiddling with our text. That was a time of shmud. Yes. And now, now that we we are free to um, you know, restore our text, that's a time of that, that we've restored the, the shalom. Yeah, but you, yes, yeah, I agree with you. Although you're quite right, there are still going to be some countries in the world where not so much the shmud, but when you'd still say the yad ovi kachovi would still be takifa al yisrael. Yeah, yeah, and I think, um, and, and so it has to. So I think you're saying this has to be an international thing. You can't have the Jewish people being strict about Shivas Batamas in England if there's trouble in France. We have to absolutely, be around absolutely, around absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It brings us back to. I mean, it's it's not really for for today's discussion. We've mentioned this before. Do you remember the 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 famous uh, uh, it was a libel case against Bayliss? Do people remember the case of Bayliss? Uh, some people made a nod from David Cohen there. Um, the, the, the famous case uh, going the beginning of the 20th century, uh, a libel against him. And in fact, it wasn't just against him, it was against all the Jews at the time, quite honestly. Uh, they, 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 it was prior to Pesach, and they, they found that um, one of the Umas Oilam, in inverted commas, uh, killed. Uh, and they blamed the Jews. In fact, they blamed this particular individual. Of course, he wanted this person dead because they wanted the blood for the um, they wanted the blood for for the for Pesach, uh, as we've seen before. In fact, very interesting. A, a, a further aside, the Shulchan Aruch himself said that this is the time of the Mishnah Bura. The Mishnah Bura, I mean, you know, died in third, 1933. So you. Uh, just prior to that, when he wrote it around the turn of the century, um, where he's writing, of course, we all know Pesach, if you can, red wine is nice. Um, but he does write, the mission itself writes, that if there's trouble and people, there are libel cases coming up and people are claiming, then do not use red wine, use white wine. He actually says that. But I, let's go back to this point I mentioned before, because I think it's, it's relevant to ben, uh, Benjamin's point, um, which was in that case that liable case they knew some of the arguments that the priests would be putting up and one of them was where it says odom ki omus oyel and people may be familiar with that case odom uh, atem kruim you are called odom but the umus are not called 
humans. And they were going to use that. And that's talking about Tumas oil. In other words, where there's a tumor um, uh, and, and the, the tome, put the, put the dead body, for example, is in a confined space that only applies to, to Jews, does not apply to non-Jews. And the, the, the Gomorrah uses that notion, atem kruim odom, the ain umas oilam kruim odom. And they knew that was going to be one of the arguments they'd be putting up in court to prove that we're not considered an odd on, they would say. And therefore, of course, you can go around killing them. And uh, that was one of the arguments. And it came to um, Mayor Shapiro from uh, the Dathiomi fame. Um, and they, they asked him, what answer are we going to give to that question when it comes up? And he said the following, I've mentioned it because you, Benji, we're talking about this idea of people suffering in other countries. He says there's a word, various words that are used for man. There's enosh and you have anoshim. Gether, gavorim. But you have odom and there's no plural of adomim. There's no word odom. There's no plural for odom. Oh, yeah, you've got Anoshim, um, but not from Adam. And he said the following. If someone's suffering in a particular town, non-Jewish person, yeah, the close family, they'd be worried. And further afield you'd go, further out, further distant, of course, they wouldn't be concerned at all. But he says there's one thing when it comes to the Jews, if someone's suffering anywhere, we all feel for that person, or we should. We all feel for that person. We can be doubling for someone miles away. It doesn't matter. Atem kruim odom. There is this feeling, I, I say, that amongst the Jews, amongst atem kruim odom. That's the point. I think ben, Benjamin's point. In other words, if someone's suffering somewhere else, that's what we're saying. And that you don't find amongst the umas Olam. And therefore, that's the art. It's not that we're saying that the non-Jews are not called human. Of course, they're humans. But that point, that description of them, calling them an odom, where they're only a singular word, we're all considered in this together. And I say back to your point, if there's suffering taking place somewhere, then, of course, all the whole of Klal Yisrael will be feeling for that individual. And the same thing here. Therefore, there is always... If there's, a, uh, we say in the Yad Odek Chom Takifa Al Yisrael, that would, of course will apply right across. So back to Al um, we've still got the following situation. I'm, yeah, we've got Mervyn's point, which is that it, it looks from this Gemara that although it's strictly a Rotsu, the Halacha has followed through and said, although it is Rotsu, appreciate that, we do need nevertheless to commemorate these various dates, but in fact it will be more lenient under certain circumstances on those paths. But the question the Gemara asking now is, why should there be differences? Says the Gemara, have a look here. Iochi tisha ba'ov nami. If you're saying that we're in this situation where it's not, as we said before, it's not shmad, um, it's not conversions, um, but it, and nevertheless, we haven't got the rebuilding of the Mesa Mikdash. Why is there a difference between Tisha B'Av and these other fasts? Omar Rav Papa, Rav Papa said, Shani Tisha B'Av. Tisha B'Av is different. Why? Hoil v'huchpunu b'ay Taurus. Even though nowadays we may be in this semi-peaceful way, Nevertheless, the commemora commemoration of Tisha B'Av is different to those other fasts. In which way? Because Huchbulu by Taurus. What do you mean Huchbulu? From the word Kefel, which means double. It's not, in fact, not just double. The Omama, this is the Gemara we've got in Tanis, Chavvav Omad Base. The Tisha B'Av, Chorav the Habais, Habais. Both the first and the second temples destroyed in Tishabov. The Nilkada Betar. 
Beitar was captured, and therefore, we might as well, as we're talking about this point, um, because there is a mission, if I can trouble you, Peter, on Safaria to bring up the Mishnayas of Tanis, the fourth chapter. Sorry, a bit challenging. Oh, maybe not. Um, oh, obviously not challenging. Uh, Mishnah, thank you. And this is the point that Tosis is making. If you look at Mishnah 6 here, Chamisha Dvarim. Now, our Gemara has picked up the point. You probably just can op open it up a bit. That's fine. We're very good. Thank you very much indeed. Not challenging for Peter. Um, our Gemara said the reason why Tisha B'Av is in a different category. And therefore, even though the time period, it's not as severe as it as it was earlier on, nevertheless, Tisha B'Av is more severe. In fact, one of the ways it's more severe, um, back to Mervyn's point, um, in fact, it's the only fast which starts, besides Yom Kippur, of course, which actually starts in the evening. So as far as that concerned, if you classify a fast as going from evening to evening, um, then in fact they've all dropped out now and they're norm. So really we're just, you know, fasting during the day, which is nothing like an official fast. So that could be another answer to you, Mervyn. In fact, it's more, they've moved out from being considered fast at all. Um, because it's, if it's not going the full day, uh, particularly you go to Asura Bateves, which is basically just missing breakfast. Um, but let's have a look at this, because the toast was asked, that's not true. How can you only classify Tisha B'Av as being so severe when there's Hamisha Devorim happened on Shiva Osa Batamas as well? Now let's have a look at this Mishnah. Hamisha Devorim Eirei Sabaseinu B'Shiva Osa Batamas. Vachamisha B'Shiva Osa They're five and five. B'Shiva Osa Batamas Nishtabru Haluchais. Uh, remember, yeah, as we've got the translation here, the tablets, they, um, the luchos were broken by Moshe Rabbeinu coming down at the time of the golden calf. Next, number one. Number two, Botel Atomi, the daily offering was stopped at the time of the, and the Romans. ear, the city was breached. And then you've got Sorof Apostomus Esatera. Apostomus, um, we got it publicly burned, the Torah scroll. And there was an idol placed in the base of English, whether it's Apostomus or somebody else who, but there was a, a could be the King Menashe it was referring to, but an idol was placed in the base of English as well, uh, itself. That's five things. But says the Gemara on the ninth of Av, it was decreed. Uh, back to, yes, on Beshiva, Nigzar al Consul Oritz. That was the time they came back after the Maraglim and they would not enter Eretz Yisrael. Remember, they all died during that period, the 40 years. And then you've got Chorav Beis HaMikdash Rishon Bishnia, Nilkadah Beta. Beta was captured. And not only that, Nilkadah, now remember that was sometime after during the Bar Kochba um, times. Uh, and the Nechrash ear, and the whole of Yushan was actually plowed over, as, as mentions here. Um, the fact that it's plowed over on that date showing a sign uh, not to be rebuilt, certainly not in the near future. Um, so back to now, having seen that, if we can turn to Tosfos, as we've seen, the, the Gemara said that Tisha B'Av is in a different category. And as we know, it is actually the only real fast going over the full 24, 25 hours. But since Tosfus, how can you say, uh, have you got it, the second Tosfus? He says, um, remember they were breached. We don't need that. Uh, just one second. Just one second. I wanted a... Oh, I'll have a look at the top Tosfus. That's the one we really need. However, Hukhbavoy Tsoris. Beyoin Shiva also Batamas Nami Ira Chamisha Dovorin. 
We've just seen in that Mishnah, thank you, Peter, that in fact, five calamities happened on Shiva Osa Batamas as well. So why is our Gemara just singling out Tisha B'Av? Kedisnan, that Mishnah we've just seen in Perik Basra of Tanis, the very last Perik of Tanis. I'm doing the top Tosfus, second line down, third line down now. Answers Tosfus, yes. It may well be that there are five things that happened on Shiva Osa Batamas, but look at the severity of those five things compared to the severity in the Tisha of Kang. And look at Tosfus' third line, Abu Khurban Bais Beis Hamikdosh Takifa Tuva. This is considered in a different league. Um, and more than that, Va'oid Loidomi Latisha of the Torah Achas Ah, so it looks like he's going back on our Gemara. You see, normally the word Kefal means double. And we mentioned double, and then the Gemara said mentioned more than two things. But according to the second answer of Tosfus, that's what the Gemara means. The Gemara means there's one calamity which is doubled. It's the Chodm Beis Hamikdosh, Rishon, and Shani. And that's why it says Huchpalu. And that's why Tisha B'Av is in a different category compared to Shiva Osa Batamas. Yes, we've seen five things that happened on Shiva Osa Batamas. So Tosa has given two answers. Number one, they're more severe. But number two, you've got this Kefal. And it helps us, I say, understand the wording of this Gemara, where the Gemara said, um, Shani Tishbab Hova Huchbulu by Torres. So now we can got a slightly different translation of those words in the Gemara. There's a doubling up. It doesn't just mean there are many, because Shivaz of Batamas also has many things, five things that happened on that date. But we have got the Huchbulu Torres as one of those things that happened is doubled up. And now we have Kefal, Mar. Kefal always means double, doesn't it? Kefal yes, I, yeah, yeah, double. absolutely. You, you, you see the problem, you're quite right, Chayv Kefal, absolutely. But you see, learning really? Shab, before we saw Tosfus, it looks like Huchbalu just means double, then it means a few, because the Gemara goes on to say, It sounds like quite a few okay. things right. happened. Okay. But you can see from Tosfus that Tosfus is taking this quite literally, as you've said, yeah. okay. means there are two things. Yes, it just continues on the Mishnah from that point. Uh, in fact, that's a good point. It doesn't mention the first thing of the Tisha yeah. B'Av, which I'm we saw. And that's a good reason because it's it's focusing on it the base of Mikdosh. Yeah. Indeed, so I, I was going to ask um, about the Girison whether that first thing was left out. But in fact, I think a better question wouldn't the Girison be better if we just stop after the word Schneel? Um, it, it, then it carries on and says Nilkut or Base on Nech but um, it would have been better if we just didn't quote those. Yes, the according. Yes, um, yes, yes. I agree with you. I agree, yeah. with, but you often have that once you once you start to carry on, indeed. You just so, carry right. on. So yeah. we started at the at the the, the, the main point, and yes. then we just finished yes. the sentence. And then we just yeah. keep on. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. But it, it's good then. Why we haven't got the first one? Because we're not yeah. looking at numbers. Because if yeah. it's a number game, you could say Shivasa Batamas is the same. We're not focusing on that, and that's yeah. very nice. That yeah. word Huchbala doubled up. Okay, the Nechroshoya. Let me just. As we spoke about, we're ultimately looking forward to this Sosain and Simcha. Um, very, um, oh, be, actually, be, yeah, I might as well. How, uh, um, can I trouble you, Peter? Uh, this time we'll go from a bit of Yeshaya. So why are you looking for that? I didn't understand Benji's point. But what, can you could just could you explain that to me again? Well, Benji will. <laughs> okay, Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi. Okay, Mervin, first I thought it was odd that the Mishnah quotes five things and our Gemara quotes four. I thought yeah. maybe the first thing got dropped off, but and then I thought, why didn't the Mishnah, why didn't the Gemara stop after the, the point of the two the two temples that were destroyed? Why do we then mention two other things? Uh, I wondered if there was a different Girsa. Um, but I think Norman has explained to me that we started the quote 
at the, the, the main point that there was a double destruction of the temple. Right. And right. then we just continue and we finish the sentence. Um, yes, yes, as we often do. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, it's very good. Very, very good. And I say it all ties in with that word, which you said, Mervyn, quite right. It does mean too. So have a look at Tanakh here, please, Peter. Yeah, go back to your shot there, Isaiah. Uh, chapter 35, Posuk 1. People may know that Posuk. Yususum, Midbo Tsio. The song our robber, nice song about that as well. Yususum from Sosin, uh, where it talks about the, the midbar, the desert. Midbar tsvetsia, Yususum will be glad. The song our robber, our robber, he translates a wilderness here. We will rejoice for sifrach kachavatzeles, blossom. Kachabatelis rose. But how if you can um, go to commentary? Oh, oh, one minute. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm 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 picking this up where it says Yesh Hebdel. One, two, three, four, five, six lines down. That's really what I'm I want to focus on. Yeah. The beginning of line is Hebdel. Yesh Hebdel. There's a difference between Simcha the Sosun. Worth remembering this. We've mentioned this point before, but here is the source, and we can we can study there. What's the difference in Simcha, Sosoin, and Gila? Hasosoin, who hapuulois hachitsonios. These are outer signs of joy. Sheya said that a person would do laharois ha simcha to show internal simcha. Certain instruments, whether it's a drum or a harp or an instrument of um, or dancing. They are internal, you'd say almost spiritual, yeah, rather than external. Levad for ongoing. In simcha, internal simcha, the hagil who aldova shenis chadesh, a sudden excitement, kamometsia, o besura tova, certain hear good news, or you find something, there's a certain excitement. That's called gila. Very interesting. Uh, we don't need the rest of that. It just goes into it. So worth remembering the difference between Simcha and Sosen, according to the Malvin, therefore, is Simcha is internal. Sosen is external, physical, getting out. It's, as he said here, it's normally the loss of news, outer signs, whether you're getting up and dancing, Get to play an instrument. It's outer signs. That's chitzoni. Very interesting. So, um, Robert, that's all right. We can leave that out. Yeah, of course. Sometimes you can have one without the other. Um, of course, you can have the external signs of of sosoin without the person really being besimcha at all. Or your person is besimcha, but he doesn't have to do much. He can just be sitting there in inverted commas, minding his own business, but he can be mole simcha. I mentioned that as we go back to our Gemara. So when it says, is, are, are we, is that implying this should be more in spiritual? Absolutely. Internal external simcha. Manifest. But when we talk okay. about... It doesn't say says, um, quite right, absolutely quite right. The Somachta is a mitzvah for internal simcha on the Yom Tov. Right. It's yeah. true. Where we there are other examples where we we I think we can move back, Peter, please. Yeah, there are other examples where we talk about um, we look forward to simcha la'atzecha the sosoin li'irecha, the outer signs bringing the kabbonus the sosoin. That will be in Yerushalayim. Yeah, Simcha le'atzecha v'sosu li'recha. Batite lono Hashem v'lekeinu b'yavo. Mo'adim le'simcha. Chagim. Loshon chagiga. Outer signs of bringing these special korbonas we bring on Yom Tov. Chagim 
Zmanim Lusosoin, where there are outer signs of Simcha. And that can Sorry, Norman, does, does he also talk about Gila? The Malbim, yes, he or? does. Yeah, you know, that the Malbim also mentioned it. Gila is still a spiritual, but it's like a, rather than being an ongoing, it's like, you know, you hear good news and that sudden excitement of hearing that good news, that internal Simcha, that's the way he explains the Gila. It's, it's like, rather than ongoing, which would be Simcha, we are, I mean, the Lashon news in the Gemara, Ezer Osher HaSameach Bechelko, it's an ongoing inner satisfaction and Simcha. That's what Simcha is. Gilo would be like a, a one-off sudden, uh, but the idea of a Sosoin would be external, where you're, you know, going through the sound. Hopefully, it's because it stems from an internal simcha moving to the external sauce. But of course, sometimes it can be the other way around. You could be the doctor um, suggesting that you do the sauce. You can you play the instruments, have the music, and hopefully that will then change the person's mood to have the simcha. But those very interesting, and you can follow that through into the Sheba Brachas. Let's just quickly finish off. Uh, we can't go much further at all, but I'll just look at the next line. Um, Tanya, this is for next week. Very interesting. Omar Rab Shimon. We'll close with this. There were four things that Rabbi Akiva would expound upon. Ba'ani ein doresh kamaisai. I do not explain it in the same way. And one of them actually is going to be about these fasts and explaining Pshat in that posuk. But before we get there, we haven't got time for that. What we have just about squeeze in is if you look around the side of your Gemara, this, the Gilion Ashas. Now in mine, it's on the left-hand side in the attachment. Uh, I'm not sure. Somebody can shout out whether it's the right or left. It says Gilion Hashas. And it follows from that. There's a little circle in the Gemara where it says, Va'ani ein Dorish Kamosai. Go back to the Gemara where it says, Ani. Have you got that circle with a line through the middle? That's normally a sign for the Gilion Hashas, Rabbi Kiva Eger. And if you bring the attachment up on this page, Peter. The attachment of this page, oh, this page, and then we'll get to the other attachment I sent you. Ah, oh, there's your Gilean Ashas, spot on. That Gilean Ashas flows from, if you see the word Nechresha in the Gemara, Zoom, thank you very much. Zoom to, yeah, very good. 200 is good enough. 400 is even better. Oh, wow. Okay, you'll have to move across. But yeah, there's your Gilead Ashas. Uh, no, Gilead there. Bani Ain Dorish. Can you just move across the page at the same? Oh, that's very good. Oh, oh there we go. There's your Nechrusha. Now, I, I just want to show you Nechrusha with Tanya Omar Shimon. But in the next line, can you see next to the word Ba'anan? Sorry, Ba'ani. You're there. Can you see the little sign circle with a line through the middle? That is always a sign for a, a, a point raised by Rabbi Kivagan. Now he's got a huge number of sforim, but he does have some which have actually been incorporated within the Gemara itself, and that's one of them. We can now move across to the left hand side. And if you've got the Gil and Ashas, he says. I in look in the safer B K Yosef Yoredea Simon Reishmem base Sif Gimel. Now the B K Yosef is the Chido Chaim Yosef David Azulai. Remember the great, uh, he's written a huge numbers from died in eighteen o six. Now as it just happens, Peter's actually got that. As an attack, as somewhere which he's now going to put on the screen for us. Well done, Peter. Uh, and that's in the safer, the big kiosk. If you wrote a huge number of sforim, oh, very good. And if you come down to Reishmem base and we come down to the little gimel, 
on the left hand side column. Now, if you can make that a little bit larger for us, that will be good. I think this time we might have to go to the zoom to the 400. Sorry, Norman, why is it called Gillian Ash House? That's the name of the same. Gillian means, it, if you like, uh, Gillian is normally like, not like volumes. Um, okay. That's just the name of what okay, he called yeah. it. Gillian Ash House means around the side of the Chasse. He's got some commentaries. Probably a bit too much. Oh, no, no, that's fine. That's good. Now, look at letter Gimel. That's what he was talking about. Now, just before we get any further, this Gemara said that what, what Rabbi Shimon said, that Rabbi Akiva learned this in some way, and I am learning it in a different way. What is the connection between Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Shimon? We'll get to that in a minute. Let's just now follow this through. Gimel. Ezu Choilek al Rabbi. Okay. Hold the Omrina. I'm going through this quite quickly. Now that we say, Ein Talmud Yochalachlok al Rabbi, Mao Sheyachlu Kashiyeshla Raya. What do you mean he can't disagree? If he's got proof, can he not disagree with his teacher? Teshuva. Answer. Oh, yes. The earlier people, they, they disagreed with their teacher. Every generation. If you've got good proofs, you can disagree. Which means, almost like business, which means as a discussion point, you can certainly bring things up to disagree with your teacher. Publicly, though, to say, he said the following, and that's talking about the teacher, and uh, then to say, but what he said is not true, that you can't do. Wow. He would not be allowed to, there's a very interesting, fascinating point here, publicly, if there was a count on a particular point, so you'd have to be very careful in the Bezdin situation, where you had a, a Rebbe Talmud, he really wouldn't be allowed to, to be counted. He'd have to come off the Bezdin, off the panel. Um, uh, publicly to show victory over his teacher. He would be able to present his proofs. If, however, the teacher would say, yeah, I agree with you, or whatever, that's great. But if not, he would have to back down. Wow. So in other words, yes, he can present the argument. He certainly can't say, well, my teacher says the following, but I totally disagree with him. You can't do that. Certainly to write down for himself his proofs. You're allowed to do that even against one's teacher. Wow. You wouldn't be allowed to paskin against your teacher. You'd have to talk to your teacher, discuss it. If your teacher still disagreed with you, then you'd have to back down. Um, so, um, so this is very interesting. Once, however, he's passed away, then yes, then he's not here to disagree. And therefore, yes, then at that stage, you'd be able to do that to Paskin um, as whatever your, your particular point was. You cannot say, my teacher used to say this, but I disagree with him, and therefore you follow me, because it's a lack of covered um, osa. Belittling. His teacher. So he certainly could write them down, um, his teacher's points. And 
just right next to it, I uh, my points that you can do. Now look at this. Just to write down, but don't say I'm saying this and I disagree with, but just write the points down. Now, this is the point I'm trying to get to. Uh, and that all comes from one of the earlier, actually not so early, Radvaz in his Chuvas. Now, have you got it? The dot. The next line down, kosher, ktsas, ktsas, kosher, amashe kosov. I've got a problem. Why? You cannot say, my teacher used to say this, but I say this. You can write down your views, but don't start, because in some way that will be belittling his reva. So I've got a problem, says the uh, Yosef, why? Exactly, Al Gemara. Tanya, we've learned in the Bryce, I've got it. Omar Rab Shimon, Abodvarim, Hoyo, Doirish, Rabbi Akiva. There were four things the Rabbi Akiva used to expound upon in one way. The Ain Ani Doirish Kamaisai. And more than that, the Nirin Devorai Midvorov, the Gemara will say. It seems that I'm right. How can you do that against his rebel? Carry on. Rab Shimon, Talmud, Rabbi Akiva. That's the crucial point. Rab Shimon, that's Rab Shimon ben Yuchoy, was actually a Talmud of Rabbi Akiva. How can he say that type of Loshan? Answers the Biki Yosef, the Chido, Vyeshloima da Agodo Shani. If you're talking about a godo, what it means by a godo is explaining psukim rather than actually paskining a shaila, that's different. The divre haradvaz from David ben Zimra bahalocha la maisa shaisim neged rabbi that you can't do. The zezilzu le rabbi uposhut. Wow, very interesting. So I mentioned this point because Rabbi Kiva raised it here. Bearing in mind that it's Rab Shimon who's saying this against his teacher, Rabbi Akiva. So thank you, Peter. We can go back to faces and, and now close. Yes. So what we see from their fascinating piece that dis disagreeing with one's team, you can write down your how you Puskin, but you can't say my teacher said this and I disagree with him. It's a lack of covered. And it's a bizoyan. In fact, when if the if the teacher would still be alive, when it came to Paskening, you'd have to back down. And we do find that in many instances. Um, I've seen that as well. Oh, that certainly with one uh, a father. Um, I, I'm, it's, there's some beautiful pieces there from from Chaim um, um, uh, with with a stipe. There are lots of examples of this. I suggested the following, however, my father told me, no, you do the following, and that's what they would do, or the teacher, unless, of course, the teacher would say, no, I agree with you, yeah, I hear what you've said, you've put up the argument, and yet I'm backing down, that's fine, but if not, we're very important, this, 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 I say, the, the covered that goes from a Talmud to a Rav, or from a, a, a pupil to a, a teacher. However, that's worth remembering. That's only when it comes to halacha. When it comes to explaining pshat in a posse, when there's no actual practical difference, la maisa, there's no difference, then um, as again, as long as you've, seen, you've said it with the, the right respect, then you can actually say, I would disagree with him. I know he said this. He's not um, but this is the way I would explain Pshat in the possum. And with that, gentlemen, we'll close no, the the same thing, because Rabbeinu Tam often argues with Rashi, who is his, um, his so presumably that's just because it's not halacha. I mean, Toysus often argues with Rashi, doesn't it? Say he's wrong. Is that not, not, not yeah, I, I, unless you want to say that at the same time. Um, but then, yeah, I, but you, you, you would, it's when it halacha. came... Yeah, but the trouble is, once they're no longer living, then you can't say, if I put this argument up, I don't know whether the, the Rebbe would have changed his mind. 
So therefore, we always then do follow the Re Rebbe at the moment. Once a, we saw that there mentioned. If they're both living, then you cannot pass it against your teacher unless the teacher said no. Um, I agree with you. If they're no longer living, then you don't know whether the teacher would have agreed. Maybe you'd say the teacher might have agreed. In that case, we always find that you follow the rabbi of the day, and whoever a person has made their rabbi, uh, you'd follow that psak. Um, I mean, the so, yes, were, were alive after Rashi died, weren't they? I mean, exactly, so that, that would be no problem. Because he's not alive anymore. Okay, fine. Okay. Uh, when he actually came to a Basak, but to actually, I say, um, if you, you, you know, certainly later, we're talking here probably the, no, no not necessarily, you can see from Al Gomorrah as well, but, you know, it depends how it's, how it's expressed as well. Um, so, but here there'd be no problem because it's a Godot, there's no problem. That's the way the Vicar Yosef is explaining. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, you can express your views. You don't have to follow your teacher's ruling um, because it's in our God. Uh, and with that, gentlemen, we're close for the day. Uh, good to see everybody.